HMD Global has announced the Nokia 8 running Android, of course, unibody aluminium in black, blue, silver and copper. This has a 5.3 inch quad HD screen, a Snapdragon 835 processor with 4 or 6 gig of RAM. Also 64 or 128 gigabytes of storage. All versions have micro SD. There's a dual camera with two f over 2.0 13 megapixel units, one color and one monochrome, both with Zeiss optics, long associated with top end Nokias, of course. The Nokia 8's party trick is shooting photos and or video with both the front and rear cameras at the same time, dubbed both these. Ah! Other specs include a 3090 mAh battery and the price in the UK is rumoured to be around £550, quite a jump from what I'm about to review. Now you saw the flagship Nokia 8 earlier, but the far, far cheaper Nokia 6 here is also a spearhead of the brand's return to the smartphone world in 2017 and follows several years of being locked out following Microsoft's buyout of the Nokia devices division in 2013. This is still a Nokia in terms of logo and branding, though. It's still designed in Finland. It's still made, well, like a tank. But the actual firm behind it is HMD Global and the manufacturing is in China. So take the Nokia branding with a small pinch of salt. As a smartphone, the 6s is well styled. I was enormously impressed by how solid it is with a slab aluminium sides and polished chamfered edges reminiscent of the Apple iPhone SE, only a lot larger, of course. This is heavy too, almost 170 grams. It's uh, kind of in phablet territory with a 5.5 inch screen. The styling also has an odd cue from the HTC U11 with the fingerprint sensor and capacitive controls mounted low down on the 14 millimeter bottom bezel rather than being centered. At this price point, £200, including VAT in the UK, design imperfections are tolerable though, whereas they're harder to stomach on a £650 superphone. The fingerprint sensor here is 100% accurate, but the spec here means that it does take a second from placing your thumb to the Nokia 6 to being unlocked and the display powered up. Is a second too long? Well, not for the target market, though anyone exposed to flagships will notice the difference. Around the perimeter is a welcome 3.5mm headphone jack, all metal volume and power buttons, there's a speaker aperture on the bottom of which more later, and a micro USB charging and data point. That's right, micro USB on a £200 smartphone in 2017, rather than the now ubiquitous USB Type-C. It feels very out of place and my theory is that the Nokia 6 design was actually finalised about 18 months ago, back in the tail end of 2015, when USB Type-C was still only on flagships. You may remember the uh, Lumia 950, 950XL were the uh, first ones, I think, with it back at the end of that year. The delays HMD Global faced getting the Nokia 6 to market here have left it with this single anachronistic spec point. Now, most users won't mind, of course, micro USB jacks and chargers are everywhere still. And to be fair, it's just about the only major disappointment in the whole device. On the back is the reassuring Nokia logo, just as on the Nokias and Lumias of old. In fact, that's a Nokia N9 running Mega. That's quite rare. <laughs> Plus a very Nokia vertical raised camera island. I suspect the raising is purely cosmetic. There's no actual reason for this pretty average phone camera to need the extra thickness, so I'll come back to the camera later on. There's also no waterproofing or dustproofing on the Nokia 6, but that's kind of something you'd normally expect on more expensive devices, since significant extra design, manufacturing and QA work has to go into achieving the various IP ratings. The display is IPS LCD 1080p in a full RGB stripe as opposed to AMOLED displays which use a pentile layout typically where you only get really half the effective resolution. The top here piece is used exactly as in the HTC 10 and U11 acting as a tweeter and is piped the left channel for any stereo audio. This is absolutely a hack of the highest order. The results when watching Netflix or similar are a definite imbalance in the sound with 80% of the volume coming from the bottom firing main speaker. Here's a demo, full volume. So it's not incredibly loud. Most importantly, you block the right speaker, you're down to almost nothing. You can hear what the earpiece is putting out. Rather muting Mr. Bottomassa here. 
So the stereo is off and the volume is definitely very, very asymmetrical. Thank you, Joe. Much of the time this doesn't really matter, but just occasionally something's supposed to happen in the left channel in terms of music or effects, and then, well, you can hardly hear it. Still, for sat-nav use, podcast, speakerphone, the speaker combination is absolutely fine and loud enough. I'd match it exactly against those HDC flagships in this regard. Yet on a phone that's not far off, a third the price. Also on the audio front is an FM radio aerial built in, not something you get on every phone nowadays, indicating the Nokia 6's potential markets in, in countries where data isn't ubiquitous and where FM radio is still a major source of news and entertainment. You also get support for 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi and NFC, indicating that HMD Global has gone the extra mile in terms of licensing all the Snapdragon 430's capabilities, unlike Wiley Fox you saw in the previous show. Uh, the latter, NFC, means that Android Pay is a go, of course. The 16 megapixel f over 2.0 main camera shoots in 12 megapixels in 16 by 9 aspect ratio, and results are generally good. See these samples here. The phase detection autofocus regularly got confused by some of my RT macro shots, but you'll have no issues for regular photos. In low light, results are distinctly, well, near, though not overly noisy. So there's some effective noise reduction at work, even if details aren't quite as clear as you like. Again, think of the price though. Results are perfectly in line with this. The camera UI is kept very simple, though with some nice extras included, including a spirit level. <laughs> no more sloping horizons. Although there's no physical shutter button on the Nokia 6, a tap on the volume up button also takes the shot and you quickly get used to this arrangement. Importantly, the squared sides of the phone mean that keeping a grip while snapping is very easy. Who on earth decided that phones should have curved sides? This is far, far better. It's not a sexy, better. Video capture is at 1080p, but rather unremarkable. There's no software or hardware stabilization. The Snapdragon 430 chipset in here is paired with 3GB of RAM and the Nokia 6 chugs along happily in this configuration without ever really seeming speedy. The target market won't mind and games just work. It's only as a reviewer of, for example, the HTC U11 that I see a performance difference in the user interface. 32 gigabytes of internal storage is backed by micro SD support that you do have to sacrifice the optional second 2G only nano SIM for this. Not that big a deal for most users, I suspect. The OS here is vanilla Android 7.1.1 with nothing fancy added. And because of this, it's trivial for Nokia to th keep things up to date. Google Assistant, security updates, the works. You do typically get a few app extras. Amazon Shopping, Amazon Prime Now, eBay and Deezer popped up in the UK after I inserted my SIM card. All of these presumably with some kickback to Nokia for their inclusion. Uh, and they'll be different wherever you are in the world. But thankfully they can all be uninstalled. You just build the phone up with the applications that you want in the usual way. Battery life was great in my test, a 3000 mAh battery working with the comparatively low end chipset to easily get through a day. In theory, there's fast charging too here with Quick Charge 3.0. Now this comes with the Snapdragon 430, though in my tests I couldn't get the Nokia 6 to acknowledge any of my fast chargers. So perhaps there's a software update that needs to be applied. <laughs> you do only get a standard 2 amp charger in the box and that's not much more I can say about Nokia's claims here. It's hard to criticise Nokia too much for the 6 here. It's almost the perfect budget smartphone. Tech geeks might sniff at the micro USB charging port on the bottom, the stereo cheat speakers. The way a second nano SIM only gets 2G capabilities, the unremarkable camera, but they'd all be missing the point. At £200 in the UK, this gets a less demanding user, a full 5.5 inch full HD display, plenty of RAM and storage, and good enough components all round, including that NFC and Android Pay. So while you and I might be eyeing up the new Nokia 8 instead, the 6 can hold its own and should be a surprisingly big seller in many world markets.